hello uh, in this video um, i am going to explain logical efforts of path so uh, consider uh, a circuit with these gates first we have a inverter and uh, gate size is 10 second we have nor gate gate size is x and the third one we have y and fourth one z the gate size of this one is z and final output capacitance is known 20 so let us find the logical effort of this complete path okay so for that we need to uh, define many parameters many terminologies let us see that one by one first let us calculate the logical effort and electrical effort of each gate ok so first one is the inverter so that one we have to calculate so what is the definition of logical effort logical effort of a gate is nothing but it is a ratio of input capacitance of the gate to the input capacitance of the inverter for the same drain current ok so for this one since inverter we have taken and we are comparing with inverter itself so it has to be 1 so g1 equal to 1 h1 is output capacitance divided by input capacitance since the size of succeeding stage that is x so input capacitance will be 10 and sorry output capacitance will be 10 and input of, of the inverter will have a capacitance with the value of 10 ok because and the size of this one is we have taken 10 so that means output capacitance divided by input capacitance so that is x by 10 similarly we will calculate for this gate g2 we will take so g2 what is the input capacitance of a nor gate compared to an inverter so we know that uh, in inverter and nor gate when we compare uh, what is the capacitance ratio let me just write briefly to input nor gate you can write like this n mos size you have like this and p mos you have two okay and this let it be a and this is b and you ground it and this is y now this size has to be 1 because we are uh, we are considering r resistance for the n mos and r resistance for the p mos equal resistance so that uh, the delay will be rise time and fall time will be same so to have the r here you should have length 4 and 4 so that your resistance offered by the N P MOS will be 2R by 4 and this one also 2R by 4 that will be half R by 2 R by 2 when you add in series they become R so this is the size of the P MOS this is the size of the N MOS now for a input if you consider the size of the capacitance here this will be 4 because your size is 4 similarly the same input a is also goes to the n mos its size will be 1 so together they are in parallel 4 and 1 so total capacitance will be 5 so g2 is total capacitance of a two input nor gate that is 5 divided by input capacitance of an inverter that we already know inverter if you consider the top will be 2 and bottom this will be 1 so this is the inverter so that size 2 means here the capacitance will have 2 and here capacitance will have 1 so totally it is 2 plus 1 3 so this will be 5 by 3 okay so let me rub this so if you have doubt regarding logic effort of a individual gate you just uh, refer the textbook it is given in detail ok so 
okay now that is 5 by 3 and the electrical effort or fan out of the axis the h2 is nothing but y by x similarly for nand gate uh, what is the uh, logical effort if you consider uh, in nand gate you will get 4 by 3 4 by 3 and h3 will be z by y z by y because the NAND gate output is nothing but the input of the inverter that is size z so that is why z divided by y so h3 will be this now finally this uh, inverter we have to write g4 equal to 1 it is straightforward inverter it is so h4 the output capacitance we know it is 20 and input capacitance input capacitance capacitance will be z so it is 20 by z okay so we have calculated the logical effort and electrical effort of individual gate the question is actually you have to find logical effort of the complete path okay so for that we need to define many terminologies let us uh, define that one by one so first one is the path logical effort so path logical effort we have found the logical effort of individual gate but we have to define a terminology that is called path logical effort the logical effort of the complete path okay so this is denoted as capital g and it is defined like this it is the uh, logical effort it is the logical effort of the path of the path it is the logical effort of the consider the path considered it is the logical effort of the path or it is the product of it is the product of product of individual logic effort individual logical effort logical effort so that means the capital G is nothing but product of that's why I will write pi and G i so where i depends on the which uh, gate you are considering here we have 4 so it will be g1 into g2 into g3 into g4 okay so here this in this for this example our g will be g1 into g2 into g3 into g4 so that becomes 1 into 5 by 3 into 4 by 3 into 1 so that becomes 20 by 9 okay now second one we will uh, define that is path electrical effort path electrical effort so we know electrical effort of a gate it is the output load capacitance divided by input capacitance now the the electrical effort of the entire path so it is the ratio of it is the ratio it is the ratio of output capacitance or load capacitance of the path load capacitance of the path of the path to input capacitance to input capacitance okay so input capacitance presented by the path presented by path so that is called capital H this is nothing but C out of the path divided by C in of the path so for the above problem h 
is equal to you can see for the above problem load capacitance is 20 and input capacitance is 10 because the size of the first inverter is 10. So, it is 20 by 10. So, that is equal to 2. Okay. So, next one now we will see the path effort. Path effort. Path effort. So, path effort is denoted as capital F. Okay. So, it is the product of it is the product of product of stage efforts stage efforts stage efforts of each stage stage efforts of each stage each stage ok. So, that means capital F is nothing but pi small f i. So, we know that the effort it is called effort of each stage can be calculated using this formula f equal to g and h. So, effort of a gate is nothing but its logical effort multiplied by electrical effort that will give effort. Now, here path effort that means it is the product of stage efforts of each stage. So, that means pi f y or I can write pi g i into h i. Now, the question we will would like to ask since small f equal to small g into small h can I make something like this capital F is equal to g and h can we can can we write like this if we know the g that is path logical effort and capital H that is path electrical effort. If you multiply then uh, will we get a nothing but path effort F. So, that one we have to verify. We will consider an example and see whether that is true or false. If it is true then it is very easy we can easily find path effort if we know uh, the electrical path electrical effort and path logical effort. Okay. Let us consider one example. Okay. Let us consider one inverter. Okay, one inverter. It is driving two branches. Okay. So size of this let it be five, and this is fifteen, and this is also fifteen and both are driving a capacitor of 90, 90 size. Okay. Now, suppose if you want the electrical sorry uh, path effort of this branch or this path I will consider and calculate the uh, path effort of this path. Okay. So, how to calculate? We will first find according to this uh, formula, we will first write what is capital G. So, capital G is product of each individual logical effort. We know that the inverter logical effort is 1 and again we have inverter its logical effort is 1. So, G into G is nothing but 1. Now, H we have to calculate, H is nothing but output capacitance that is nothing but 90 divided by input capacitance that is 5. So, 90 divided by 5 you will get uh, 18. So, we will get 18 we will get. Okay. Now, path effort. So, can we have directly G into H? So, that is nothing but 18 into 1 equal to 18. So, this is what we want to check. Now, we will calculate path effort using its original formula that is pi f i. So, that is nothing but pi g i h i g i h i. 
so now let us see gi hi means g1 h1 so what is the g1 h1 g1 we know that is 1 h1 means its output capacitance divided by input capacitance of the first stage so output capacitance we have one inverter here another inverter we have two branches so the total capacitance at the output node will be 15 from this 15 from this total it is 30 divided by input input is 5 this is uh, g1 h1 then g2 h2 i have to do g2 is again uh, logical effort of naught is 1 and electrical effort it is 90 divided by 15 90 divided by 15 okay so totally what we will get so this if you calculate this is 6 the and this is uh, 6 so we have 6 into 6 that is nothing but 36 now you can see f is whatever you have got uh, from here this is g and h you multiplied and you got 18 and actual f is 18 so i can tell this cannot be the capital f cannot be equal to capital g and capital h it has to be calculated from here so this formula will not hold good so what is the solution for that so solution is we can introduce one more parameter and we if we adopt or change this formula suitably then we can get f directly from this g and h and one more parameter that we will see now so that way we must introduce a new parameter we must introduce new parameter new parameter okay so that is called branching effort branching effort okay or it's called b so what is the branching effort it is the ratio of total capacitance that means c on path plus c off path to the on path capacitance to the on path capacitance so it is c on and path okay so for the above uh, problem we let us see that for here the on path capacitance is 15 that is this is the on path on path capacitance is 15 off path is 15 so in the numerator i have to add these two and denominator divided by on path so 15 plus 15 divided by 15 so we have to write 15 plus 15 divided by 15 so this will give two so this is what branching effort so if we consider path branching effort this is branching effort we have calculated if we want path branching effort path branching effort branching effort then we will introduce a symbol capital b it is it can be calculated by multiplying the individual branch effort okay so path branching effort we will get when we multiply the branch all the branching efforts if you multiply we will get the capital b so now the path f now we can equivalent now the path effort path effort path effort that is capital f is equal to capital g and h and b so one more parameter we have to add that is b let us see whether it is true for the above for above problem so in the above problem above problem we found the b is 2 how many branches we have found we have found only uh, at this node only we are having a branch two branch and all other node in the complete path if you consider we have branching only at this node so we have only one b for this small letter b if here also if you have two branches we have to calculate separately that also and we will call that one b2 and final branch path branching effort will be b1 into b2 but in this case you have only branching is there only at this node 
at this node you do not have any branch so you have only b only so the above uh, formula above problem the capital b is pi b i and we have only for the first node so that is nothing but the 2 we have nothing to multiply with this okay only 2 so your f g h will be g we have already calculated where is that g for this uh, g is this is 1 and h is 18 so g 1 h 18 g 1 h 18 and b 2 so totally it is 36 and this matches with this one so this one is matching so i can write so this is equal to pi f i yes so you have to multiply one more parameter that is path branching effort then only you get path effort okay now let us finally calculate what is the path delay path delay so path delay that is denoted by d it is the sum of delays of each stage it is the sum of delay of each stage or i can write d equal to summation di if i know the each stage delay then complete path delay can be calculated by adding that one okay or this again this can be split into two one is df plus another one is p so df means this is path uh, it is nothing but the path effort so df is nothing but summation of all the path effort that is f i if you know plus all the parasitic delay if you know then that will give the path delay so d capital d is equal to it has two parameters two components one is path effort so efforts of each stage you should know you have to add that one another delay is nothing but uh, parasitic delay so this we discussed before also that is when uh, the delay is equal to f plus p where f is effort effort delay and p is parasitic delay so if you consider complete path then it will be summation of f i you have to add all the uh, efforts and parasitic delay if you add these two then we will get the complete path delay okay uh, and if you observe if you observe here f is equal to g h b what are the observation you have here now what are the observation from this result so one is our path effort path effort is the product of path logical effort path electrical effort and path branching effort and this is independent if you observe f is independent of independent of independent of gate sizes you can see here we have not considered any gate size without knowing the gate size you can calculate this g h b or f the path effort you can calculate without knowing the individual gate what is the meaning of this for example the above first problem when we considered you can see here we have not mentioned the gate size of the intermediate gate size we have never mentioned so that means if you do not know the gate size or transistor size then also you can calculate the delay by that is the capital F you can calculate by multiplying capital G capital H and capital B so we no need to know the individual gate size to predict the delay so this becomes very easy given any circuit we can predict the delay of the circuit without even identifying or without even calculating the gate size of individual stage so we can directly tell what is the delay of the path without knowing the gate size so that is the advantage of or that is the uh, result of this equation that is the result of this one 
So, this tells I can write f is independent of gate size. So, that is why f equal to g h p and another one uh, path effort path effort path effort delay path effort delay that is d f is the sum of is the sum of sum of stage efforts sum of stage effort sum of stage effort or i can write sum of stage efforts stage efforts so that means the path delay the path effort delay not path delay path delay is summation di path effort delay so that is nothing but df it is nothing but sum of stage effort fi so now can we we can minimize the delay uh, the path delay the path delay d can be minimized can be minimized minimized when each stage bears same effort when each stage bears same effort what is the meaning of this one same effort so path delay d can be minimized by minimized when each stage bears the same effort meaning is here it is the Okay. So, now uh, we have now two constraint let us see one is f that is nothing but pi f i another we have d f in that it is sum of all stage effort. So, path effort the path effort is nothing but product of individual stage effort similarly path effort delay that is d f is nothing but summation of f i and we also say that this is constant this is not dependent the capital f is not dependent on individual gate size it is the product of in individual stage effort so i can tell the sum of set of numbers i can write like this sum of set of numbers set of numbers number sum of set of numbers means we are targeting here df whose product is whose product product is constant whose product is constant is minimized 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 by choosing all number by choosing all numbers to be equal all numbers to be equal to be equal so that means totally we want to minimize df we want to minimize df what is minimum uh, what is df actually it is a summation of fi and we know that the capital f we know we already know that it is nothing but product of fi so the product of f i is already known now we want to minimize the d f the product is known product is we already know that is nothing but product of f i now the sum of those stage effort we want to reduce that is d f we want to reduce this you can reduce when each stage is having same effort okay each stage is having same effort then its product is constant and its sum can be minimized let us consider one example to illustrate this so suppose if there are if there are four stages with stage effort f1 f2 f3 and f4 four stages are there so a path is constituent constituted by 
four stages so four stages together constitute one path then and we know its product suppose we know pi f is equal to 16 that we know okay so f1 into f2 into f3 and into f4 we know that is 60 now we want to calculate a value df which is nothing but summation of each effort summation of each effort so the sum can be minimum only when each stage is having same effort that means in this case if you have 2 2 2 and 2 if you take the product is 16 and sum it will be nothing but 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 that is 4 plus 4 8 you can try with any other combination of f1 f2 f3 f4 it cannot be it cannot be lesser than this lesser than this if suppose if you take 1 into uh, 8 into 2 into 1 the stage efforts are like this 1 8 2 1 then product is again 16 product is 16 but what about the sum so df is nothing but 1 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1 so you will get 8 plus 2 10 plus 11 plus 12 you will get 12 only so you will get 12 the delay the summation will be more summation is more when we take different different stage efforts so you will get is uh, summation very small and its product is constant you will get only uh, lesser sum only when each of the stages having same value so that means here four stages means each stage has two value two then its summation will be very minimum okay so from this we can uh, we can write uh, if a path if a path uh, has n stage has n stages n stages with path effort with path effort path effort f and path parasitic delay and path parasitic delay parasitic delay of all the paths all the stages path parasitic delay parasitic delay p you can calculate simply d is equal to n into 1 by n f to the power of 1 by n plus p so actually d is nothing but summation of uh, d uh, summation of f i plus p is not it you can see here it is summation of so it is summation of f i plus summation of p i so summation of f i we can get uh, when uh, that is nothing but when you multiply n and f to the power of 1 by n so this is the this minimum delay we can achieve by this so if you consider stage effort equal with the n number of stages then the formula becomes like this n into capital f to the power of 1 by n plus p okay uh, and we will illustrate this one for the above problem so for the above example we can calculate minimum path delay so there may be doubts here so once we solve a consider a problem when we solve one problem all the doubts will be cleared let us see for this example we have to collect we have to find um, the minimum path delay so formula tells d equal to n into f to the power of 1 by n plus p okay so that means first i should know capital f this i should know first so that we know capital b into capital g into capital h so each one we have calculated already the b we have to calculate g and h were already calculated you can refer here you can see here we have calculated 
yes g we have calculated 20 by 9 and h is 2 g and h both are calculated so g 20, 20 by 9 so g 20 by 9 and h is 2 this is already calculated and b so branch effort here in this problem we do not have any branches here it is only single path we do not see any node where we have branches here also we do not have any branch here also we do not have any branch here also we do not have so there are no branches that means b will be one only one branch you have so you no need to calculate separately that b so this is nothing but 40 by 9 so this is nothing but 40 by 9 so f we know so path delay we have to calculate that is d is nothing but number of stage is 4 and we have to uh, find nth root of f okay so that means uh, it is 40 by 9 and its power of 1 by 4 okay uh, that one we have to calculate plus plus the parasitic delay plus the parasitic delay okay parasitic delay is p okay so now if you calculate here so 4 into if you calculate uh, 1 uh, 40 by 9 to the power of 1 by 4 it comes to be 1.45 and plus p P means parasitic delay of each so we know that parasitic delay of inverter that is nothing but p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus p4 so that is equal to so you have to first multiply 4 into 1.45 so that is um, 4 5 is at 22 4 4 was 16 plus 2 18 and 4 1's a 4, 1, 5. I think 5.80 you will get. Yes. So, 5.80 plus P1, P2, P3 and P4 we have to calculate. What is the parasitic delay of an inverter? Inverter it is 1 plus uh, 2 input NOR gate. 2 input NOR gate parasitic delay is it is uh, 2 input NOR uh, parasitic delay of a 2 input NOR is 2, again parasitic delay of 2 input NAND gate is 2 and again inverter is 1. So, you will get 2 plus 2 4 plus 2 8, 8 plus 5 13.80. So, this is the minimum delay of this path. The minimum delay of the path is 13.80. Okay. Mm, this is how we calculate uh, minimum delay. Now, let us find the gate size of knowing the delay. To achieve this delay, what should be the size of each gate? The initial gate that is inverter its size is given, but we should know the, we should calculate the size of NOR, NAND and this last inverter. So, how to do that one? So, we will use the same formula that is uh, we have found 1 by or f to the power of 1 by n we have calculated and for that one we will we will consider it as a capital uh, we will consider it as a f cap now this f cap is nothing but uh, the individual f it is nothing but it is g i or h i g i or h i so we have consider g i h i of each stage is same that is why f to the power of 1 by n equal to f cap that is equal to g i into h i so this f cap is also equal to if you consider the fourth one g 4 into h 4 okay this f cap is also equal to g 4 and h 4 it is also equal to g3 h3 it is also equal to g2 h2 and g1 h1 because we have considered same stage effort to get the minimum delay so the f cap we have to calculate now f cap is already we know that is nothing but 1.45 we have calculated this is equal to g4 into h4 again this g4 and h4 
here we know the g4 what is the g4 you can see here g4 is already known it is 4 by 3 so it is g4 is 4 by 3 sorry not 4 by 3 g4 is 1 sorry g4 is 1 so g4 is 1 into h4 and h4 you, you we know h4 what is h4 how to calculate the h4 h4 is 20 by z so that we will write here 20 by z so that i will substitute here so 1.45 is equal to 1 into 20 by z so from this we will come to know what is uh, z so z is 20 divided by 1.45 that comes to be 13.8 so z value is 13.8 that means this inverter z is nothing but 13.8 if this is 13.8 then the input capacitance of this will be 13.8 this capacitance so if we know now this one we can calculate the uh, gate size of this nand gate so that is again we can write the same equation we can write the same equation that is f cap is also equal to g3 and h3 so f cap is we know it is 1.45 and g3 g3 we already know g3 is 4 by 3 let us write 4 by 3 and h3 h3 is nothing but z by y it is z by y z by y now we know the value of z it is 13.8 so you can calculate 1.48 equal to 4 by 3 into 13.8 divided by y so if you consider now y is equal to 4 into 13.8 divided by 3 into 1.45 so that comes to be 12.7 similarly you can calculate you can consider f cap equal to g2 h2 and you know g2 is 5 by 3 and h2 is 12.7 whatever we have calculated divided by x okay so from this you can calculate x the so x value if you consider it comes to be 14.6 and final the gate final the uh, initial gate that is we have started from here final means this one so its size is already uh, written it's given we will verify whether our calculation is correct or wrong so for this also we will apply that formula so where that g1 is 1 h1 is x by 10 so we will do that one so f cap is also equal to g1 and h1 where uh, g1 h1 already there we will see whether we will whether we are getting same f cap or not we'll check so g1 is 1 and h1 is what is the h1 mm, x by 10 x by 10 h1 is x by 10 so that means 1 into x value we just calculated now 14.6 divided by 10 so this comes to be 1.46 that is correct f cap is near it is we have 1.45 we have rounded it off so it is nearly coming f cap is 1.46 that is what we got here also but it is near 1.45 we got it is nearby so now we know the all gate values the final step is we have to find the transistor size so let me copy first this so that we can easily control c and control v okay now uh, what is pending now we have to uh, calculate uh, get individual transistor size we have to calculate okay so let me write first uh, x is 14.6 and y is let me see what is the value of y 12.7 and z is 13.8 13.8 okay now let us find first one inverter let us find the first inverter inverter it is already given inverter size is given 10 so 10 means the c in is 10 c in is 10 so the transistor size for a 
inverter we already know that is this portion is 2 this portion is 1 ok. So, the C in is 10 means the 2 capacitance 2 x from the P MOS plus 1 x from the N MOS that should be total capacitance should be 10. So, here x size will be 3.3. So, that means in the inverter you have to consider P MOS width 2 x that is 2 into 3.3 .3, that is 6.6 uh, .6, and x is the uh, size of the N MOS that is 3.3. .3. So, we have calculated the transistor size also. Okay. So, next we will go for uh, the second one, second gate is uh, that is NOR gate. So, NOR gate we have to consider and it has two input and size is already given NOR gate 14.5, 14.5, but we should know the structure of NOR gate. So, NOR gate it is you have two PMOS at the bottom and you have sorry n mos it should be 2 n mos at the bottom and 2 p mos at the top ok. So, this is a b and a and b. So, what is the size of this? This size must be 4 to have a unit resistor R, here it must be 1. So, it is 4x plus x, I am considering only for A, for that 4x plus 1x is equal to 5x and this size we already know 14.5, 14.5. So, x is nothing but you have to uh, divide 14.5 divided by 5 you will get 2.9 you will get. Once you know the x, you can calculate this one. This will be 4 x and this will be 1 x. So, P MOS size will be 4 times the x value and N MOS will be 2.9. Now, one more we have that is uh, a NAND gate. So, NAND gate we have size 12.7, 12.7 and NAND gate uh, the structure is 2 P MOS you have like this and 2 n mos. So, a b a and b if you consider. So, now size should be this size this size should be 2 and 2 and here also it should be 2 and 2. So, your a and b ratio will be your p mos. So, for 1 a that is c in C in. So, for this uh, C in is 12.7. So, your capacitance value that is 2 x plus uh, this size 2 and this size 2. So, 2 x plus 2 x should be equal to 12.7. So, x is equal to x is equal to you have to divide it, it is 3.17 ok. So, finally, the NOT gate its size is given, its size is 13.8. So, structure we know already ok. So, this is 2, this is 1. So, 2 x plus 1 x equal to 13.8 and x is equal to 4.6 you will get 4.6. Now, we have designed all the uh, we have designed all the transistors also. So, we know the transistor uh, high, uh, w by l ratio. So, then we can uh, design the above circuit that means this circuit uh, this circuit we can design with the exact gate size. So, that its delay will be minimum and it is equal to delay is equal to we have calculated already minimum delay also. So, that is equal to where it is 1 minute uh, this is this one the total delay is 13.80 ok. Thank you.